The specific field of strength training is a broad and much debated area within the industry. Much research has been dedicated to it, however the outcome being that there is much differing evidence that is open to interpretation. Researchers, personal trainers, specialists and coaches all have their own opinions on which methodologies are the best ones to use and which ones get the best results. You too will find that as you progress in your career and you learn more and become more experienced, that your opinions will also change. However, despite the conflict and a lot of information, what is universally agreed upon is that there are some key basic scientific concepts and principles that all strength training practitioners need to understand and apply. Thorough understanding of concepts such as strength physiology, supercompensation, the law of diminishing returns, and the differing training variables are all needed in order to write safe and effective programs that will ensure results. As you are aware, the benefits of strength training are numerous. To recap, some of the benefits include increasing the ability for muscles to work harder and longer, increases the mass, quality and tone of a muscle, increases the metabolic rate, improves muscle coordination and balance, and helps keep body fat levels down. And this is why almost everyone, regardless of age or ability, should have some form of strength training included into their exercise program. Just how much strength training they should do is dependent on the person's experience and their end goal. The big question that you need to ask yourself when determining how much a client should do is what level of training is required in order for them to get bang for their buck. In other words, how much stimulus is needed in order for that person to respond favorably and gain maximum results. Of course, this means considering things such as how many training sessions will produce the best result? How much recovery is needed between the sessions? How many exercises are needed to be included in their program? How much volume is needed? Whilst it seems there is a lot to consider, just remember the following key points. In order to develop strength, the body must be stimulated in the form of intensity and effort. It must have adequate recovery in the form of quality rest and nutrition. It must adapt via supercompensation, in other words, a change in muscle strength and growth, and it must be stimulated regularly over a period of time, in other words, progressively overloaded.